in case you guys don't know me, I'm James Mulcahy. I work for Zagat um, here, which is owned by Google. I'm the executive video producer uh, for all the Zagat videos that we do around the country on YouTube. So I was super excited, because I work with YouTube all the time, to be interviewing Chef Manchi today, who, as you probably know, if you didn't have our food truck put already, is a YouTube sensation with over 670,000 subscribers, videos about Korean cooking, and a new cookbook that just came out, which is what she's here to talk about today. So I'm going to give the floor to her for a little bit so she can tell you the background and how she got started and about her book a little bit. Then I'll chat with her and ask a few questions. And then, of course, we're excited to have everyone in the audience ask questions today. I think I see a few trays actually probably from the truck pit that have her food in it. <laughs> so do you want to get started? Yeah, thank you, James. Thank you, guys. Thank you for coming to see me here. And so today is my very special day. You know, my special day, why? A few years ago, 2011, I came here exactly. And at Google, this office, I made Korean shaved ice with sweet red bean. It's called pap bing soup. And this is for 200 employees. I made this with other my YouTube creators. That was a big hit. So, and then now, four years later, 2011, this year, 2015, I came here with my cookbook. See? Look at that. Hey, you know, this is a YouTube. I mean, YouTube and Google, this is saved my life. And in 2007, I first time I posted my video on YouTube. I'm teaching Korean cooking through my video. And then at that time, I never knew that this, was, this kind of a success will be coming. But now, exactly like 2011, I came, 2015, with my own cookbook. This book is made with top notch publishing company, Hope to Mifflin. And best of best editor, my co writer, all book people. I cannot imagine. I couldn't imagine. So, this book is sold all around the world, a bookshelf. So, this is my real success. Without Google and YouTube company, I could make it. Plus, my reader, my audience who trust my recipe. So they love, love, love my recipe. All around the world, they learn Korean cooking from my website and my video. That's why I'm here. And also, another thing is I'm very honored to sit here today is that you guys taste my food. I didn't make it. You are Google <laughs> chef. I made Google chef cook my recipes from cookbook. <laughs> Can you imagine? Oh my God, this is very success, successful. <laughs> so when I started my video for the first time in 2007, I was working as a family counselor in Toronto, Canada. My mom said, Mom, I'm busy these days, and I'm doing some YouTube video. My mom said, what about your job? <laughs> my mom is kind of really you know, reluctant to encourage me. But now, I was, my story about me was the New York Times, a huge you know, article recently. My book was published May 19th this year. And then uh, New York Times, you know, the article about me, huge you know, story. And then my mom is living in LA, Koreatown. She, just, she doesn't understand the English. Her friends are all speaking Korean. Her friends, hey, your daughter is in the Korean Hangugilbo. It's a Hangugilbo is a Korean newspaper in LA and in, in all America. They translate basically. Oh, Mangchi is a Korean born. This is a New York Times. A New York Times reporter said blah, blah, blah. And then now my mom is so proud of me. She said, oh, I'm a Mangchi mom. <laughs> <laughs> and then, so she's so proud of me these days. So, so things have changed like this. So um, and today I tasted that the recipes uh, from my cookbook, the re uh, food made. Korean black bean noodles. You know, did you taste black bean noodle? Black sauce, kind of noodles on top, kind of black noodles. Oh my God! I gave a lot of, lot of compliment this to your, you know, chef because uh, so tasty. And they said, oh, that's easy, easy to follow because you made a really nice cookbook. You know, <laughs> and also your chapche, stir fried noodles with vegetables, so good. Um, also multi grain rice. That's my cookbook also recipe. Oh my God, and also all the dishes I tasted, this is awesome. And you know how much I'm honored to be here. You know, think about this. Four years ago, not many people trusted my recipe, and, but I'm here that with, as a cookbook author and the mainstream, 
I'm in the mainstream, you know, people acknowledge my ability, and then I'm just uh, sitting here. Okay, I just talk about my the story, you know, what I did in Korea. I was born, raised, lived in Korea, and also I cooked for my family for years and years. I'm, I'm just a typical Korean housewife who loves cooking. And when I was young, ever since I was young, I was very, very interested in delicious food. You guys are uh, interested in delicious food? <laughs> yeah. I met some guys uh, I met in New York you know, a few years ago. He said, I don't like food. <laughs> so kind of rare, you know, so I don't like food, but you know, I just thought, oh, okay, you should be hungry. <laughs> Maybe you will love. Anyway, uh, when I was uh, in Korea, I never went to any culinary school. I never learned actually recipe from any cookbook. All the recipes are just naturally cooking, home cooking. And from my mom, my grandmothers, two grandmothers, two sides, both sides, my aunts and relatives, even marketplace. And then when I taste something good, and then I gotta learn how to make it. That's the difference. A lot of my friends, they love, they love their delicious food, but they don't want to learn how to make it. But in my case, I want to learn. My eyes are just on fire. Oh, how can I make it? And then if I taste it really tasty, I come home, try to recreate. And then luckily, I can taste some food, and then I know the, hmm, how it's made. Hmm, what's inside? I can figure out easily. So when, ever since I was young, like my old families, my mom's side, aunts, and then when I taste it, like who is the best version of each dish? I can just quietly determine. And then, for example, there is a Korean some kind of soup every day. Every peop, everybody loves this kind of soup, soybean sprout soup. You know, does it sound good? Very healthy, you know, soybean sprout soup. But, uh, my, uh, I visited my, uh, I visited my aunt house, my aunt, my mom's younger sister's house, two hours, you know, the distance from where I used to live, and then my uh, aunt gave me this um, Korean soybean sprout soup, different. I tasted it, and she added dried anchovies, and to make that like a really umami full taste, you know, savory, make it savory, and also she added some hot pepper flakes there, and some onion, chopped onion, plus, and she scooped that ground toasted, paper, toasted sesame seeds on top. And then I was going to eat you know, my, uh, my meal, my, my aunt said, wait. And with this rice, you need this, the radish kimchi. So radish kimchi coming, radish kimchi was um, a little fermented, so it tastes tangy, cr crunchy. So I added, my, my aunt asked me how to eat this. Oh my God, unbelievable. This is so, so tasty, much better than my mom's version. <laughs> so ever since that, ever since then, my kongnamulguk, soybean sprout soup, is that, that's my recipe. But I'm, I may change my mind maybe tomorrow if I taste someone else's you know, soybean sprout soup better than this recipe, I gotta learn. And then I gotta share this recipe with my readers my audience, and these recipes are all posted on my website. So my old readers, they love, love my, some kind of you know, authentic way my recipes, they love it, you know, they just tested my recipe, and they trusted my recipe. So I told you I never studied at any culinary school. I actually, I, am a, uh, I have a master's degree in education. So I studied the philosophy of education, and I used to teach at a university where I studied. And also, when I was in Korea, I used to be English teacher later, and translator, interpreter. And uh, later, uh, I, I had a chance in, from 1992 to 1995. And for three years, I, uh, with my family, we went to, uh, we came to Missouri, Columbia. You know the Columbia, Missouri, small, small city. I met from Columbia, Missouri out there. Columbia, Missouri. Anybody who's uh, Kansas? <laughs> 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 Just a middle, mid, uh, like a middle of America. So I, uh, when I was there, and I met a lot of Korean, you know, expat. 
So Korean expat, Korean housewives, and then they were mostly their students at the Columbia University. And then they, we met that, you know, almost every weekend, we at the park and padlock dish. So this padlock dish, I have to bring the one dish, like uh, today you had a japchae, I bring japchae. So usually we do, you know, at the park, Korean barbecue. And somebody bring the, you know, kimchi, somebody bring the, you know, some the side dish or, you know, vegetable dish. And then we make the all nice, nice, nice padlock party. And some dishes that I never tasted there because uh, I was growing up, uh, I grew up in the really southern, southern part, you know, city, southern food. Even, even a small country, but still there are like, uh, you know, some of the area, you know, so, uh, different provinces. So I came from really south, you know, the city named Yosu, you know, Harbor City. So that when I was in Missouri and some food, they like a chicken, fried sticky chicken, it's a called Dakgangjang. I had never tasted it before, but somebody came from different region uh, from the, where I lived. She just uh, taught me. I, I had to learn because it's so, so tasty, crunchy, like a candy. So, and this kind of uh, things all my life long, like uh, recipes are coming, this region from that region, even I just uh, moving around. Until junior high school, I lived in southern part in my city. But from high school, my parents sent me to Seoul. You know, to be successful, you gotta go to Seoul. <laughs> so from Seoul and then university, graduate school, and then, you know, so I had a chance to taste all different region and food, and then I collect my, some recipes like one by one for myself. I had never thought about that, you know, YouTube someday, I will be a YouTube cook. I never expected at that time. Probably if I had known that, I would have learned more, more passionately. <laughs> so. So, and then two, uh, 2002, I immigrated to Canada. So uh, Canada, Toronto, I did all kind of job. First, I studied with you know, cashier. So cashier, my next door, I went there to manager. Who is the manager? And the manager came. So I, I want to work here. Can I work you know, here? So what, what can you do? He asked me. So I said, I can do computer, you know, so uh, typing. And he said, what we need? is that person who can carry heavy stuff, <laughs> load and unload. So I said, uh, okay, anyway, so my, res my resume is a kind of a non-useful, you know, because uh, graduate school, who cares, immigrant. Even my English is not perfect, right? So anyway, I came home, and then, but he called me in one week. He said, oh, you want to become a cashier? Sure, <laughs> and then I did a cashier. I learned a lot. I mean, whatever I did in my life, I learned there are a lot of things. One example I learned when I was in a cash, uh, working as a cashier is the, like water. Water is a small bottle, it's a tons of, tons of tax charge. But large bottle don't charge tax. So I don't know why, I think it makes sense a little bit. Some people, you know, kind of a little pretentious person, you know, I, I'm willing to pay for small bottle. Okay, you deserve to pay more. But large <laughs> bottle, probably family member is waiting for this, you know, uh, water. You know, I don't know, this is just only my theory. So kind of a small thing, how to make a sandwich, American, you know, the North American style sandwich, I just all the time learning. And I try to sell my chicken. Wow, I have, I'm so ambitious. Right? So I, the guy name is I never forget the manager because uh, he he helped me. You know, one day I asked him, Hey Frank, I can make some Korean fried chicken. Everybody knocked down when they taste my chicken. So can I bring some of my chicken? You can taste. And they sure. So I brought it. I made it all kinds of. I just work hard. And then, but he couldn't eat any one piece because there is a peanuts. He has a peanut allergy. And then, but all my other cashiers, you know, my co co-workers, they love it. They love it. And then they ask me, oh, can I order? Can I order some Korean seaweed rice roll, kimbap? You know, so actually I used to sell a few people, you know, later. But, and when I worked as, uh, also I was working as, a, you know, the movie, movie extra. And movie extra, you know, movie names, how to deal. Have you, have you ever seen the movie? There's a, there, I came home, and then, you know, memorizing English is very difficult for me. 
sometimes a backward I, I uh, memorize. People ask me, who was he? You know, oh, I just, uh, I got a job and today I went there and then, you know, so uh, I did a movie in How to Deal. They asked me, who was he? You know, who's in there? <laughs> so I don't remember, like, you know, the guy named Peter Gallagher. Peter, you know that Peter Gallagher? What happened to you guys? <laughs> <laughs> so he, he's a, his name is a later. I always like forget his name. People ask me his name is a Peter Gallagher. You know, also the, the girl name I forgot totally. He, she's more famous than Peter Gallagher. And then eventually how I never forget is that about the Peter Gallagher is, sounds like a garlic. So okay, Peter plus garlic, and then never forget. And then. Uh, in, in Canada, I was working also, I used to teach English to Korean immigrants. And also later, I got a good job uh, at a nonprofit organization as a family counselor. I worked there for three years, and then before I came to America. And then I become Canadian citizen. And then uh, now, just 2000, when it's eight, I came to America to live a more adventurous life. And this is my making video and also making video and running my website this is my full-time job. So this is a very uh, fascinating story. People ask me, where are you from? And then I know what it means. They see my face, right? So even though I'm a legally Canadian, I always say, I'm Korean. But legally Canadian, but waiting for my green card in America. <laughs> <laughs> so like, uh, um, so this is a, like a, you know this is my life journey. So I'm always interested in learning something new, and also especially food. Food is no matter where I live, no matter what I did, food is always in my heart. Some delicious food I find, I gotta learn how to make it. So this is uh, this is uh, where I am now. So I made this cookbook. So you guys uh, uh, found my cookbook. This is. Uh, uh, how, I'm, I'm, let me tell you how I got involved, involved with this making cookbook. My, re, uh, my website, uh, my website, uh, 2002, oh, I didn't talk about this, you know, how I made the YouTube video. I have my son. Uh, my son was a computer, at the time, computer you know, science student. He asked me, Mom, have you ever heard about YouTube? So yes, I have. He says, why don't you? Why don't you share your recipes on YouTube? Probably, you know, you'll be so popular because your food is delicious. And also, never, your content will never run out. That's true. The content never runs out. You know, I see a lot of YouTube creators, like at the beginning, oh, they did it. And then later, oh, there is nothing to show anymore, right? <laughs> So cooking is just my lifetime, like uh, really passion. So that's why, like uh, I, I was very interested in his idea, but I was not sure how. I mean, just only I have a small camera, really cheap camera, and with just a little digital, you know, camera with a, you know video function. But how can I do? How can I edit? How can I film? You know, no idea. But like around, you know, a few weeks later, I decided. Sounds like really fun. So let's do. And in April uh, 2007, I posted my first video, Spicy Stir Fried Squid. I just, uh, I wanted to surprise my reader, my audience. I just brought it from Korean, uh, the China, Chinatown or Korean grocery store, huge frozen uh, squid. And then in front of the camera, I just cut it in half and then take the guts out. <laughs> and then in the meanwhile, just uh, I was washing and the stir fry and spicy, and then my gas detector, gas detector is a wing, 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 and then behind me, background, I did this, I see this, and oh my god, embarrassing. Behind me and then kimchi, I was going to make a kimchi and salted cabbages is just there, and then even I didn't think about background, background, and the music, even just the, uh, without any permission, even I didn't know that's like illegal. Like Morrissey <laughs> music and then put this music because at the time that's my favorite music. And then I made it, okay, sounds good, looks good. And then I went to bed. Next day, I woke up and also I was really doubting, you know, who's going to watch this? How can they find me? 
actually next day, many people subscribe, subscribe to me. And then they said, oh my God, it looks good. Someone already made this. Can you imagine? Someone already followed my recipe. And then they also said all kinds of good encouragement, you know, nice comments, plus next request. Can you make a Korean bean paste stew? Korean kimchi, Korean bulgogi? So, wow, this is so fun. People just, uh, these guys are real my friends, you know? <laughs> and then before doing this, I had another hobby. It's a kind of a internet, like uh, my, that's why I got my name, Mangchi. Mangchi is a hammer in Korean. So my real Korean name is Kim Gwangsu, Kim Gwangsu. Nobody pronounced very correctly. So, but Mangchi, I got this name because the, uh, the CD of Heroes online game, I was like, uh, you know, wielding some hammer and then <laughs> huge this, all uh, uh, throw away my stress, you know, by playing my game, online game. So, and then around that, even I made some good friends, still we keep in contact. <laughs> so people from Montreal and people from, you know, L.A. and Singapore, you know, sometimes we used to play a game like uh, some task force. You know, task force means that you can't go to a bathroom even for three hours until you finish this cave mission, you can't get out of there. <laughs> and then I used to do this, but uh, uh, this uh, cooking video is kind of more fun for me. Because these people are real people who cook, follow my recipe. And then, okay, I, first I kind of, half of my hour, the leftover my hour is that for my game, half is for this. So I couldn't sleep much. Sometimes like a Saturday, all day play game plus making video. So <laughs> anyway, as soon or later, uh, I was uh, like uh, chosen as a YouTube partner. At that time, all the day, you, you become a uh, partner and then you can get paid. But not, these days everybody, I think, I, they are YouTube partner. So, and then they gave me partner some kind of medal. So medal, medal was probably, you guys uh, heard about this. Medal is uh, right next to my channel. So really motivated me to work hard more and more. And then, uh, so ever since that time, I keep posting my video. And then a few months later, my, I made my website because I really need a home on the internet. Because uh, some of my uh, YouTube audience said that, oh, I, how can I find this uh, Korean ingredients? What is it? You know, and also like uh, what, so a lot of things to talk about, you know, like uh, tips when you make especially, especially this thing is uh, 20 minutes like uh, sizzling things, why, something like I need this. So I really needed to make the, my website. So I made this. Mangchi.com, and then uh, ingredient photo, and then kitchenware photo, you know, where to find Korean cooking uh, grocery stores, where can you find? And then my readers, they, they submit. Okay, this is my favorite Korean store. And then they just uh, submit the information. So, and then all this, my website is uh, gradually so increase, keep, you know, getting bigger and bigger. And then, Eventually, some people send me photo, Mangchi, I made you a chicken, my chicken, and I, it was a big hit. I went to the party, everybody asked me where I learned, I talk about you, and then, oh my God, that's, you saved my life. So many touching stories I got, you know, some, someone married the, uh, Korean, uh, the Korean husband, the American lady who married the Korean husband, and then recently, some they don't get along well. She, kind of a partly food or a cultural thing. So the lady found my recipe. She made the Korean bean paste soup for husband. Husband said, oh my God, this is my mom's food. Where did you get this? And then, you know, the food by, you know, not only food by itself, but also like the wife is working hard to, you know, to get along well, to get a better relationship, you know. That's the kind of uh, make the husband really like uh, feel better. So they get along. So anyway, like this kind of story is tons of tons of story. Every morning I wake up, I read the email and through the, all my social media and all the time I'm encouraged and I'm empowered. So uh, this thing is that, you know, so my uh, website is getting bigger and bigger and then, 
I just made another section and the Korean food photo. You guys make that because they sent me email. This is the noodle soup that I made with your recipe. And they show me, you know, they, to send me, it takes time and effort, you know. They have to use Photoshop, you know, so they have to, you know, do some, something. And they send me. And then I just said, wow, this one I got to share with more people. So I made the Korean food photo section. So this photo, you make my recipe, and then if you have a story, or oh, it doesn't matter, and no story, just uh, post directly from your computer, post it. And now, so far, thousands and thousands of photos are on my website. This is my treasure. This is my treasure. And then later, my readers, they become friends. They, these guys are like a Korean parilla leaves. For you guys know about Korean parilla leaves? It's called the genye. So anyway, so parilla leaves, and I make a parilla leaf kimchi, parilla leaf pickle. And then somebody said that, you know, oh, I found that you know, on my, uh, my yard. I thought this is like weed. All the time, every year, I got rid of this. Just really, these guys are so, so be alive. Next year, again coming alive, you know? So they will really get tired of this kind of precious vegetable for Koreans. I pay, I pay $2, $3 per really small package, right, in a Korean store. But some people are just, you know, parilla leaves they throw away. And like we talk about parilla leaves, you know, and then some people say, oh, I don't know. I'm the living in the middle of nowhere. I cannot find in you know, a Korean store. How can I find the parilla leaves? Oh my God, I like to taste. And then my reader, another reader, okay, I will send you the package, seed. So he sent it to her. So they got, these guys are became friends. So I thought that maybe it's a time for me to make the meeting place, you know, through my website. So I made a forum. So through the forum, they talk to each other, and then they share their, all their know-how, you know. So some people are making kimchi. At the beginning, seven years ago, when she started kimchi, she asked me, she bugged me, hey, you, you made 10, like 10 pounds of kimchi, how about uh, one pound of kimchi? Can you give me a recipe, only small one pound of kimchi recipe? This is uh, unbelievable for me. It's, as a Korean, we make kimchi like 20, 20 heads of Napa cabbage I make. Even I never know that what's the pound, what's the big deal, you know? Usually Korean cabbage is huge. Chinatown cabbage is so small, I don't know where they find this one. <laughs> the Korean Napa cabbage is huge. Like, so some people ask me, please cut down the recipe and give me so only one cabbage, Napa cabbage. I don't know from what to say, you know? Okay, it, you know, cabbage size is different. Anyway, one of my uh, readers, uh, his, uh, she or he, many people, they started like only one cabbage, but now they make 20 pounds of kimchi. Because kimchi is not exactly only one side dish. With kimchi, you can make a soup, stew, pancake, and steamed, you can add chopped dish and to the dumpling. Everywhere you can make, all kinds of dishes you can make here. So, like a, like a Korean housewives. When I lived in Missouri, Columbia, I had a friend, you know, she's from China, and Miss Yui. And Miss Yui came to my house and then opened my wind, the refrigerator. Her eyes are like this. Ooh, this is a kimchi, kimchi. Yes, kimchi. She couldn't believe this Koreans are eating a lot of kimchi. Kim, this is a usual thing for me. Kimchi is like a huge container, this amount of container. And then, but these days, my readers, my audience, they love kimchi. They make that amount. Some people are selling kimchi. Mangchi, I, I sell <laughs> Korean kimchi to Koreans. <laughs> Can you hear that? <laughs> so my Brazilian reader let me know. She is selling kimchi at the Korean church to Korean. So really, really fascinating stories every day. I just always hear that. Yeah. So this, uh, um, and then some people ask me, hey, Mangchi, even though you just uh, give, give us a recipe, I need a book. I like to give it to somebody who is not access to computer, and then I like to give them the real written recipe. So can you make a book? But I never thought about like this kind of book. I said, okay, sure. And then I made a PDF file, <laughs> PDF, and then a color with lots of color, and then sold on Amazon. Also, first I started like a giveaway for free. 
So still, you guys can get you know download for free. You know, book one, book two, book two, three, book one, two, three. Even I never thought about making real book at the time. Just the people ask me, okay, sure, I will do that. And then uh, the book was uh, downloaded. Millions of people downloaded for free. So actually, when I uh, pitch my book, I just that was really good. So I asked my agent, see, this is evidence. My book is uh, millions of people downloaded, even though that's uh, free. And then, but, but the book, real book, people who want to get the real book in their hands, is that we made this uh, PDF file and then nice kind of a uh, uh, small size is really small. But book price is so expensive. It should be because I use the colorful. Book should be colorful. This is my theory about cookbook. I, my theory about cookbook is that you should have a lot of colorful, nice photos and step-by-step -step photos, you know, and so that I'm a visual person, you know, YouTube video, why I'm making video, right? So, and then I, but problem is they're expensive, $30 for this thing. I don't make much money from this. Amazon, Amazon, you know, because uh, otherwise I need to make black and white. So I don't like that idea, black and white cookbook, no matter what happened. So anyway, someday I, I, I was thinking that maybe someday I should make a real cookbook because a real cookbook, this book is much cheaper and also price is cheap, plus a lot of, lot of good people, something like a recipe is almost the same, but like a, make you guys understand <laughs> better. For example, my, uh, my co-writer, her name is Lauren. She's a, I, I make a recipe and I send her. And then she make a kind of, basically I give her my jewel. And then she make a jewelry, right? And then she's a, okay, monkey, then you said that this you cover, uh, the cover or uncover? You cook the 15 minutes, but cover or uncover? I was so frustrated, what does it mean? Of course cover, inside I just thought the cover. And then, yes, cover, I just swallow, you know, my frustration. And then sometimes, Manchi, it means that sesame oil is toasted or untoasted? Toasted. In Korean cuisine, always toasted. <laughs> to toasted sesame oil is always, always. Sesame seeds, toasted or untoasted? Always toasted, right? <laughs> And then, like, uh, and also, I was so shocked when, she, when another editor, Roy, his name is, later he joined our team. Uh, my book is made with tons of people. Roy, he's a really tough editor. He asked me, oh, Mangchi, you made the, you made this, uh, the, uh, the beef jerky, you know, beef jerky, you guys uh, should follow. You, if you get the today your book, make, if you eat, you know, beef, beef jerky, make it. This is, uh, everybody loves that, my beef jerky. Beef jerky, he asked me, how many pieces are there? I mean, I don't remember. And also he said, this is a how many serving? It depends on how much you like that, right? <laughs> I mean, if you just uh, like uh, three pounds of beef, you know, brisket, I made this. And then, you know, some people, five people eat just to finish in one time or just uh, one person like, oh, okay, I will save this uh, for one year, and then you can eat it. I mean, uh, so make me so frustrated. But you know, I was always uh, like a swallow. <sighs> yeah, right. My cookbook buyer later, cookbook buyer, those guys will have the same question, may have the same question. So that's right. I shouldn't feel frustrated. I should appreciate this. And then actually, eventually, I had to make my beef jerky again, exactly follow my recipe, cut it, <laughs> and then, okay, this, uh, recipe, mm, this is raw, and then this is my 30 or something like a pieces, and then the, the exactly, and then I just made three, di divided, and then one portion for raw, one portion for my cookbook writer, uh, co-writer, for one third is for myself, and then I divided it, right, the evening, and then I sent them, you know, the, the I sent them an envelope. Roy, next day he got it, holy delicious. Oh my God, so delicious, <laughs> he emailed me. And uh, my other, you know, cookbook writer also. So this, um, uh, when I uh, make this cookbook, I have a lot of, a lot of funny stories, 
and you know, still I don't remember all. And then sometimes I should write down. Otherwise, you know, I get older. I always forget. So uh, this is uh, like a, a long journey. But uh, around four, four, five years ago, uh, eventually I met best of best agent. So this agent made made it possible to make my cookbook. She found this uh, old, you know, uh, best publishing company and also co-writer and also, you know, the food uh, food photo designer and all everybody. So kind of a set. So I'm so lucky. I'm so lucky first. Why I'm lucky? I got involved with YouTube and Google guys. Google AdSense pay me money. So I'm, this is my <laughs> full-time job. And then also my readers, my reader audience, they trust me, they love me, right? And so I'm lucky. And now I'm just invited this. They made, they made your chef made them my recipe. How fascinating this is, you know, the story is. I can keep going and on. So, but I think that's <coughs> enough that you guys have a question. <laughs> Ask me a question. Well, I have a question. I mean, do you think it's, it was, became so popular so quickly because there's a lack of knowledge or a lack of authority about Korean cooking in America? And you're filling that void? I think that first, uh, food is delicious. <laughs> yeah, food is delicious. I mean, the, uh, like uh, I didn't know about even I used to go backpack travel. I have a lot of hobbies, you know. So, but I traveled to many countries, different countries. But always I believe that, like uh, food, you know, you got Koreans, especially Korean travelers. You traveling another country, you gotta taste other cultural food too. And if they said, oh, without Korean kimchi, I cannot survive, and then I kind of criticize them. Oh my God, come on, just two days, three days, you know? I was thinking like that. But, but you know, later my readers, those guys say the same thing. They said that, you know, my uh, Netherlands, you know, some, the guy named Rainier, he makes all kinds of Korean dishes. His cooking is better than Korean housewives cooking. She, he sent me photo. And he said he traveled in Greece. And then for one week, he said, oh my God, I miss my kimchi. So I think they're kind of a little addictive, you know? So kimchi uh, and also Korean food is all vegetables, like all kinds of vegetables, and mountain vegetables and tofu, you know, some the way of cooking, not greasy. And some way like people really, it must be appealing to people. So tasty and second, I think, so Korean food, as you know, the Korean barbecue, people think about that. You make a Korean barbecue at home, you can share with tons of people. Recently, I blog about this. One of my readers, he married. He's, ma he's uh, on the wedding day reception. He made Korean pork belly, grilled pork belly. He followed my recipe, or the pork belly, and you know the grilled plate, and also the burner. Gas burner, just only $20 in Korea. Korean grocery store. And he prepared each table, people are sitting, 10 people are sitting. And then he put this in a grill plate, everything, just to let them cool themselves. <laughs> and then pork belly and the lettuce, samjang, you had samjang today, dipping sauce. And then everybody just wrapped this and then they, they were so, so happy. And then my readers let me know, so I was very uh, impressed. So I just blog about his story. So this is a, like a Korean food is that you can share with many, many people. It's supposed to be shared, you know. So I think maybe that's the reason. Where did you learn this recipe? Oh, this mangchi.com, you know. So that's why I think people come to my website and also so Korean fried chicken. Everybody loves Korean fried chicken because, because why? Delicious. Please, hmm? Delicious. How? Double fry. Yeah. <laughs> this is exactly my editor gave me a hard time. When I do this, I'm like, oh, this is so delicious soup. And she asked me, how delicious? You should explain. Americans don't know how delicious it is. <laughs> oh, <laughs> squeeze, squeeze, okay. It's like a chewy, oh, irresistible, oh, you know, irresistible, not enough. Say something, you know. <laughs> Korean fried chicken, you know, as I know, really, we always make the coating. The coating is made with, you know, starch like a starch, potato starch I use, and then make it really crunchy and a little sticky. 
So because of some uh, juicy sauce I mixed in the last minute, and then make it kind of a little sticky and look like, taste like a rice cake a little bit, but very, very crunchy, crunchy, crunchy. So, and also it depends on how much you like a spicy food, you can add spiciness, spicy, you know, the chili pepper flakes. So I think that that's why, you know, crunchiness and delicious, yeah? Yeah, that's why people love it. I recently read an article saying that Americanized Korean cooking is too spicy and actual Korean cooking is not as spicy as we like it. Is that true? No. Where did you? <laughs> I see the old tons of uh, weird, uh, you know, some theories from where it coming. You see the Koreans, uh, when I go to Korea, like uh, I sometimes visit Korea, Koreans love spicy food. And also we Koreans believe spicy food is uh, making your body really, you know, there's some researchers research. Spicy food make you always awake and then, so it's an anti alzheimer So you just, uh, you are always like, uh, some, like, always smart, you know? So <laughs> spicy food is very good for your health. All the researchers are working hard. But real Koreans are like uh, early morning TV. From early morning TV, I have to see this. People, Koreans love food. All spicy sauce mixed with spicy sauce eating. Even in America, nobody, I even I don't feel like eating spicy food from early morning. I skip breakfast. I always drink you know, large, big, huge cups of you know, black coffee. That's my breakfast. <laughs> but my readers are surprised. I thought that you love kimchi all the time. You know, no way. And then, <laughs> and, then, and, and then, you know, that's not true. Yeah. So Korea is more spicy food. You know. I think it's fun that you mentioned the New York Times article, and they kind of called you the Julia Child of Korean cooking. Yeah. How do you feel about that? Even that terminology, Julia Child, is that came from 2007. When I studied, just not long after, I'm really sorry, you know, my video was sorry. And then I was living in Canada. So Canada, New York Times version, Canadian newspaper, all nationwide, the biggest newspaper is Globe and Mail. So Globe and Mail interviewed me. And then she asked me, she wrote to the uh, Korea Jul Julia Child, right? So I, I even, I didn't know who the Julia Child is. I embarrassing, eh? I searched, oh, Julia Child, French cuisine to, you know, America. Uh, but anyway, ever since that time, many people call me Korean Julia Child, you know. But one day, uh, I just, a uh, Korean newspaper guy, uh, radio guy, or I was interviewed, you know, with, uh, after my article on Global Mail was on, la as usual, Korean reporters keep bombarding with me. Can I interview, can I interview? You know, they don't find me. But always uh, when I'm in New York Times, they just uh, kept calling me. When I'm in YouTube and then did some cooking demo, they just come to me. So when I'm on the mainstream newspaper, they want to interview me. So they sometimes, one day, they, a Korean interviewer asked me, how do you feel about Julia Child? You know? So I said, uh, and also somebody asked me about that. Uh, Martha Stewart, or uh, her her YouTube uh, YouTube you know the subscribers numbers are um, bigger than Martha Stewart. So they asked me about the Martha Stewart. So I said Martha Stewart doesn't have a YouTube. That's why you know the, you don't have to compare me with uh, Martha Stewart. Martha Stewart is uh, such a wonderful you know chef in the world, right? So just uh, I did it. Are you gonna have your own TV show one day? I, mean, I would just uh, think about it. already some you know, TV show people contacted me, uh, but I was very busy doing my cookbook. So I can't do this at the multi-work, multi-task like this, because when I do this, like I have to focus on this. But my, I don't want to skip my video every 10 days. This is my readers are waiting, waiting, waiting. You know? So I don't want to disappoint my readers, uh, YouTube audience. So when I have more time, uh, let me think about TV show. Maybe, yeah. maybe. Yeah. I think it's a good time to see if the audience has any questions. Does anyone? Here we go. Uh, for me, I think it's very clear you see your personality and I think it makes you a very interesting chef to watch on YouTube and even listen to your talk. Um, can I get two questions? Um, one is, what is your, no your favorite non-Korean food? And second, who made your logo? Because I think that's one of also oh. one of the few things you may have on your site. And yeah, uh, the logo? Uh, my daughter made. 
Yeah, my <coughs> daughter is a, uh, she's a dentist. Yeah, she made this. But I gave her idea. I gave her. <laughs> because I cannot, I cannot draw well, but I know when she was young, she can do very well. So I said, okay, I want to do this kind of, you know, sign that, like that, you know, some, you know, some big fish and a big knife, and then I like to do that. And then she made this. And also, what was your first question? Oh, no Korean like food? Korean? Oh, spaghetti. <laughs> 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 spaghetti meatball. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Hi, Mangchi. So I, I know that sometimes you travel to uh, new locations and use the local you know, produce, etc., to cook. I saw one of when you went to Maine I, or yeah, somewhere in New England. Do you have any experience which you can relate where you found something unusual and tried to use that in Korean cooking? Yeah. He must have read my website, you know, so <laughs> like a very deep question. Um, <laughs> whenever, like, uh, uh, before I started my YouTube video, and when I traveled, you know, other countries, for example, when I went to France, I love crazy about the Fran French cheese, stinky cheese from Normandy, and baguette. And there was, I kept eating, and then I gained weight when I came <laughs> home. But I didn't mind, you know, because of delicious food. <laughs> But at the time, I l even though I love love their you know their cuisine, uh, but like around three days after, like I thought about something spicy kick. Oh my god, I cannot swallow very well. I you know I cannot swallow French food well <laughs> because I liked that. So I needed something spicy. So that I took that you know some Korean hot pepper paste. It looked like some toothpaste, like a, like a small paste, and then. Just in case I might use this guy. And then I took it. And then, okay, time for me to use this. I went out, you know, grocery store, you can buy, you know, the cucumber everywhere. I took it and washed this, and then just I got one bite. And then this <laughs> chewed, like toothpaste, like a pepper paste, one, you know, one drop, and then, mmm, it's good, it's good. Now my, I calm my stomach, and I can swallow well. I'm ready to eat French cuisine again. <laughs> so, and then ever since I started my cooking video, and different case, I'm more serious cooking. And also whenever I travel like more than one week, I need to make a video. So with uh, their local uh, vegetable, local, you know, some ingredients. So. I have like uh, some several ingredients, like a Korean uh, soy sauce, Korean hot pepper paste, the bean paste, and the fish sauce, garlic, green onion, these things you can get everywhere, right? So these things uh, you cannot find easily. Plus, Korean rice. Korean rice is, um, you, may, you may know about Korean rice, is uh, like we, same rice as sushi rice. So a little stickier, stickier than some Mexican or long grain rice. Some people ask me, oh, Mangchi, you know, is, that the, can, is it working with the normal rice? Normal rice for me is short grain rice, sushi rice. All my life I'm eating this, but I know what they mean. So I always uh, I take the, my rice also. And then I, I arrive there, I make a kimchi. And then I go to the local, uh, local grocery store and some market, and then I find that if I don't find the Napa cabbage, I just find any green, any green, even spinach. I bring it and then make just kimchi or just the usual cabbage. Usual cabbage kimchi also, I post the recipe. When I traveled, you know, sorry, Mexico at the time, and then with the cabbage, half of cabbage, I made the kimchi. Oh, that was delicious. And my, I made with stew with this. Yeah, so all the time I carry Korean uh, ingredients. Yeah. Is there anything that you really just hate to eat that you just don't like? Uh, yeah, of course, like a repulsive one first. <laughs> repulsive food, I don't like it, like a bug, you know? I don't eat it. You know, some people just ask me, oh, can you cook dog? You know, so no. <laughs> and also, um, yeah, pretty much I love all kinds of food, yeah. Oh, one, one, one recipe. My readers ask me, chicken feet. Mangchi, please uh, make the chicken feet recipe. But for some reason, chicken feet, I, I don't think I can handle. You know, I can handle live fish. I can handle live crab, you know? 
And then also live lobster. All the recipes are, you know, videos are on my web channel. But for some reason, I don't think I can handle, you know, some chicken feet, you know, especially chicken tone. And then, you know, <laughs> I was thinking about all oh, these little things, just uh, jumping around, you know, how can I do this? Oh, I cannot. But I don't know, my readers, I love my readers. Maybe someday I may change my mind. And also blood sausage. Blood sausage, people love the Korean sundae, it's called sundae. But the blood sausage, okay, I love to eat sundae. But one day I tried to find the you know, blood. I need to buy blood, right? <laughs> so I went to Chinatown, I, buy, I bought some blood, but uh, it turned out disaster. And it also smells not good, you know? And then I hate that, so I couldn't make it. But maybe I may change my mind again, you know, who knows, yeah. I think I had a question over here. Mm. Something like uh, when I go to the fusion restaurant, right? Fusion restaurant, really upscaled restaurant. And then, oh, this guy made with the kimchi brine. I can smell kimchi brine. And some uh, sauce is like a pinky, pinkish. And then maybe sour cream. But something that I don't know about. I never went to culinary school, right? <laughs> Only I know about Korean food. So sometimes I cannot figure out, and also I don't want to know about that. Right? So, but Korean food, when it comes to Korean food is uh, almost all, I know. When I taste this, I know that, you know, how. Even people ask me, Mangchi, I went to the um, restaurant, Korean restaurant. They gave me something like a sweet and really salty, and then kind of a color is brown. It tastes like it's a potato, but it's not exactly potato. Oh, that's the, that's the fish cake, you know, so I know that, right? So uh, kind of things that I know they exactly about Korean dishes and also Korean restaurants, you know, North American Korean restaurant, what they serve usually. And then I know their all side dishes, so the list. So easily I can figure out. But like a Korean fusion restaurant, upscaled restaurant, you know, those guys learn uh, Kore you know, uh, culinary, you know, art, you know, some maybe like a secretly they use some, you know, spice that I don't know, you know, yeah. So I'm, I'm curious, do you have many followers in Korea? Yeah. These days, a lot of Koreans are coming. Actually, like uh, uh, most of the people coming is uh, North America, American, USA. It's a, USA is around 70% of my uh, readers are coming. How much big, huge, huge fans. But Koreans are really almost none until last year. But like uh, over one year, these days, more and more people coming and they leave a Korean comment in Korean. What should I do? I have to answer in Korean. And also, I was thinking that maybe these guys don't understand you know, English. You know? So I just studied the Korean caption. So I did the English caption. Uh, I pay for English caption because I cannot trust the Google, Google translation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, no, Google, not Google Translate, the YouTube Translate, auto translation. So, oh my, my, uh, and then, but uh, I hire, you know, translation, and also the Korean translation is done by me. So I do this. Yeah. I think we have time for one more question. Um, thank you for being here. I actually go to your website. I'm Korean myself, but I go to your website all the time to see what else is out there. I just was. I have two questions. One is if. I was thinking about why it took a while for Korean food to become so big in the States, and I feel like there's this term called kam, mm. which, you know, in Korean, it's, it means you just do it by the feel of things. You don't really measure things. Mm. Do you think that that's the reason why it might have taken so long for it to become big in the States? And then my second question is, would you ever consider doing mukbang, which is a big Korean, um, you just eat on the show, and it's like, it's huge in Korea right now, so I think, yeah. Yeah, that's uh, remind me of my the, another reporter from Korea. She uh, KBS, the Korean broadcasting. The the uh, they the reporter asked me exactly the same question about mukbang, <laughs> but uh, they uh, mukbang. I saw that one time. Kind of that's not my my style. <laughs> yeah, I mean I want to teach Korean cooking, just the uh, authentic recipes, but. I in the always at the end of my video, I show them how passionately I eat. 
you know. Sometimes the people say, you look like a crocodile, you know? <laughs> yeah. But I don't care, more people love that, you know, to when I enjoy my food, you know? So because, uh, you know, that's it, you know? So who cares, like, uh, something is between my teeth, you know? So everybody, I mean, <laughs> those guys are following me. All we are the same group, community, you know, who love food. So, and that uh, I can answer. And the Korean food, why? Why Korean food was not popular? I think uh, Korean food is popular. I mean, we don't have to worry about this because, like, Japanese food these days is popular. You know, they're all new. Chinese food, you know, Korean, uh, Japanese food. You know, I mean, even think about Chinese food. Chinese, China is a huge country. India, huge country. Mexico, huge country. They are not uh, huge big here. Now, th I think the Japanese food is very big these days. You know, uh, food is delicious and healthy. Right, so, uh, but Korean food is like a trend. But I'm surrounded by the people who love Korean food. So I'm, I'm almost like, a, I think that everybody loves Korean food, but which is not true. Which is not true. When I meet, sometimes I'm interviewed by you know radio uh, host. Uh, when I talk to them, I feel that oh, they don't know about Korean food. A lot of people don't know about Korean kimchi, not yet. So it's starting, starting. But I'm very positive, and because my readers trust my recipe, they share the food that they make, share this with their family and friends, and these days they make lunch box. We call this Japanese in bento. They call this bento in Korean doshira. I used to make my doshira for my children. Sometimes I used to make a lunch box plus a dinner box and four. Four lunch box, dinner box. And I used to wake at 5 o'clock a.m. to make the fresh, uh, fresh meal for my family. So, so these days, my readers, Mangchi, I took Doshira, Korean lunch box, to my work. All of my coworkers are envious of me. So <laughs> those guys are spreading Korean food, I think, yeah. And so are you with your cookbook. That's our hour. Um, there's cookbooks in the back for sale. I think we all want to say thank you so much for being here with us today. Thank you so much, yeah, yeah. thank you.